Hey everyone, welcome to Group Text. If you know me at all, then you know one of my favorite shows is Below Deck. You name the franchise, I've seen them all. But the originals still hold a very special place in my heart. So when I found out that Fraser Olander was my the current chief stew is going to come to my house and be my guest. I was happier than Captain Lee seeing clear skies. Uh, Fraser's the first man to land the role of Chief Stew on the show, also the first gay man to hold that spot. A formal modeling agent in London. You got it, he's got to start in the yachting industry five years ago in Naples, and you've never looked back. Welcome! Thank you so much for having me here. You have no idea. You say you were excited. I was having palpitations on the way here. This is too much for okay. me. But we have to. Explain how we connected. So yeah. I followed you on Instagram and within three minutes of minutes. me. It was about 30 seconds. Yeah, of me following you, I get this DM going, oh my God, is that really you? <laughs> and I'm like, oh my God, is that really you? I thought I was being pranked. It, hell, I had the check mark. I know. And I was like, this can't be real. Surely not. And little did you know, I am a crazed below deck fan. And I'm so grateful. I mean, I can tell you everything from season one on. And we're going to get into Below Deck in a minute. What made you get into yachting? Because everyone says they're running from something when the people they get do. to. So was it heartbreak, the law? And one night you woke up accidentally enlisted in the Merchant Marines? I, I mean, mean well, quite almost. I was working in the fashion industry and it was my lifelong dream. And I was doing it um, at quite a high level. And it couldn't get better than that. It couldn't get higher than that. But I wasn't happy. And there was nothing in it that just brought me to life. With an ex-boyfriend, I went on a super yacht as a guest um, in the south of France. And I spent a good 95% of my time with the crew. Or at least in total awe and fascination with their love for their jobs. So it was that good on the trip with the ex-boyfriend? That's what wasn't so good. The crew was, <laughs> and the boat was, and the experience was. But I could see people loving their job, just adoring it. And I thought, how, how do they have that? How could they feel that amazing towards their career? And immediately I just thought, I need to do that. I need to chase that. That happiness, that joy, and that passion is what I want to have in a workplace. So went back to London, told everyone that I was going to become a yachty. And they were like, what on earth is that? And I was like, just don't worry about it packed a bag, moved to the south of France into a hostel, believe it or not. Oh, dear. Um, which I just thought was like a motel. Turns out it's really not. No, it is nothing no. like a motel. <laughs> and, um, and, and dock walked, which is literally meaning walking up the docks every morning with a CV, selling your soul to boats and yourself just to try to get a job. Um, and then I finally got one, and here we are. So if I remember correctly, you'd only worked on one boat before you ended up on below deck but you were on that boat for a while that's right yeah. and you were the head of housekeeping so i'm assuming it was a big big boat yeah she was beautiful incredible and i worked believe it or not my first job getting onto that boat was a crew mess stew which means i'm a stew member to the crew Ugh. not even the guests yeah so that was one thing. And then I thought, you know what? I can't be here forever. Let me work my ass off. and Let me get to the top as fast and as quickly as I can. And, um, and that's what I did. And I, got, I let nothing get in my way. Well, before you left London, you were in the London high life. Because the modeling industry in London, that has to be very heady and fast and yeah. rock and roll. Yeah, it's brutal. It's cutthroat. Um, and I've always been that way. So it kind of, I fit in quite well. Um, equally, it just gave me such a taste of the fashion industry and of beautiful luxury, um, including travel. So it kind of, it, it, I don't, it had nothing to do with the job. At least I knew how to work with people. Yes. And that's what yachting is for me. Okay, so you're now the chief stew. Last time. Okay, so we've got out a little English tea. So would you like anything? I, this is my mother's stuff. We've got you <laughs> little finger sandwiches, little sweets, scones. Uh. So if you I want just anything, just this is stunning. Scream. Can I also say, for an American, you've done a fabulous job at making this exquisitely British. Well, my mother. Thanks to Joan. This yes. is now 
I mean, this is perfect and it looks divine. And thank you so much. Oh, thank you. So if you'd yes. like anything, just let me know. I will. I'll pick at it. Yes, as we this go was through. grandmother's. I know. It's, it's beautiful. Thank how do, you. How do you keep it? What do you do? Do you lock it up and, and put it in cloth? We actually have, I sound like such a snob, but I'm <laughs> going to do it anyway. We actually have cabinets that I had lined with silver cloth I and mean, drawers that were lined with silver cloth. I work on a super yacht. This is exactly what we do. And with stuff like this, I mean, you need to look after it like a child. Yes, you do. Well, I have a child Beautiful. to look, look after. <laughs> um, I've asked Captain Sandy and Captain Glenn and all a, a number of other people the same question, which is your job is hard enough without cameras. Below Deck had been on for a while before you were asked to be a part of it. And we'll get to how you got there. Why the hell would you take a job that's hard enough and say, oh, sure, let's make it harder and have cameras follow me around? I think it's a very good question. Is it insanity? It's insane, yeah. And I don't know. But they had pestered me for a couple of years before saying yes to it. And I thought, well, I can't be in this industry forever. And I knew that this was kind of career suicide working, you know, on a TV show that in the industry. But I thought, I'm going to give it a go. And let's see how far it goes. You know, I was like, okay, yes to the first interview. Oh, okay, maybe we'll see about the second. Next thing we knew was happening. So how'd they find you? Facebook. Wait, okay, so walk it back. Their casting directors are amazing. And I think they get to know of every single person in the industry. And I knew they had my eye on, they had their eye on me for a while. And How did um, you know? Were they just messaging, messaging you? Messaging, yeah. Seeing if I wanted to talk. Um, and I entertained it for a bit and I stepped away. And eventually, I was also... So, before I started yachting, I knew nothing about it. So I watched Below Deck. <laughs> I watched it. I was like, well, I need the terminology. I need to act like I know what I'm doing. Because I don't. And so I did all of that and loved it. And then got my job on a vessel and never watched it again. But I, at least it gave me that sort of understanding of the premise. Um, so there was a little bit of fangirl in me. Okay. But, um, but no, I definitely didn't apply. Lots of people apply to do it. Yeah, and it's, casting is a jigsaw puzzle. Yeah. Um, so they pestered you and pestered you and you finally said, what the hell? Okay. <laughs> and I always wonder this too, is people know their lives are going to be incredibly exposed. Yeah. And so I'm always shocked, not just by the crew, but the guests, bad behavior. Don't you want to look at people half the time and go, do you realize that you're saying this and you're being filmed? Yes. Again, I'm in, I'm, I'm in, I'm in a state of confusion throughout filming every season because I'm just, I just, how can you not be aware? Right. But the, it turns out that there are way more crazy people in this world than I ever thought there was. Oh, honey, and that's you have just no how idea. Act. It's crazy. It's insane. And, and, I, and I think to myself, even if there wasn't a camera here, which I don't think about because you forget about it. It's all, you know, forget about the cameras when you're filming. But I'm in, I'm just, I'm, sh- I'm in pure shock most of the time. Yeah. Especially with guest behavior that I'm now very used to, but I still think that some of these stews are, are more insane than some of our guests. It's always a toss up on which department is the most dysfunctional. Yeah, it is. And it, com- it comes down to the crew eventually and the crew dynamics, you know. Um, Lola Deck crew like to gaslight the interior with all of their flirtatious behavior and whatnot. And that's always a disaster. So I stay very... Yes, you do. You definitely keep um, a respectable... Distance. Distance most of the time. <laughs> well, was, well, yes. Okay, so your first season was actually the ninth season. Correct. Of Below Deck, and it was filled with all sorts of levels of drama. Mm-hmm. And we got to break this all down. Um, you were in the middle of some of it, but you were also a bit like the Greek chorus <laughs> <laughs> for a I lot like of that. it. So let's break this all down. Let's start with the shallow stuff. What was it like working for Chief Stew? Well, first of all, the fact that you walked on the boat and took one look at it and looked around. And this made me laugh. And this is why I knew I was going to like you. You went, mm, very Russian. No <laughs> offense to the Russians out there. No. But the, the Russian boat build is a very stereotypical build and set up. And it's not for me. And again. And that's the big spiral staircases. The, yeah, the wood and the gold, yeah. all that stuff. Not this. this boat should be for me. I'm not a guest. But I like to be proud of where I'm hosting and how I'm doing things and where I'm going to be based for the next seven weeks. Yeah, you were just like, mm, 
Right. And I knew exactly what you meant, which right. makes me as much of a snob <laughs> right. from being on just as many boats going, mm, mm. don't yeah. like that. Or mm. like, who would make that decision? I always think like, who would pay to hang out in this? Well, I don't even think it's that. It's who paid the designer. Well, that they got away with murder there. You know, and it's just like, yeah. you look at it and go, well, it's somebody's taste. Okay, Heather seemed even more OCD than you. Mm. That seemed like a bit of a challenge. I felt like she, you were cleaning and she would come in behind you and then you would come back and find another water spot and wipe that off. And I don't, you put it great. You said it's hard to warm up to someone that cold. Mm, to an ice cube. Yeah. I didn't feel, I didn't feel any connection. I didn't feel uh, sympathy. I didn't feel warmth. And that is something that I really I feel like it should be required in any interaction, professionally or personally. And there was none of that there. And I couldn't see what she was thinking or really asking or wanting from me. And that put me on edge. I feel like she she talked about that she was so young and had, I wonder how much of it was, and you would know better than I, she had to have a tough exterior sure. to make up for that she was insecure that she had accomplished all this Entirely. by 25. Right. And so I think that the side that I was uh, needing from her was just down to the years of experience. The next, you know, the next three or four years she could have needed to add that to her. But she was a phenomenal chief stew. Mm -hmm. She taught me an enormous amount, pretty much everything I know um, as a chief. And um, yeah, I'm very grateful to have worked with her. That's very diplomatic. It's true. I know, but she, she's great, but she's, she doesn't come across as warm. Mm, yeah. At all. Yeah. Um, one of my favorite other favorite ones, how could lead deckhand Jake have no idea you're gay and I am not judging, <laughs> but you're not exactly butch. I'm not a butch queen, no. I don't know. And you can see my shock in the season. I'm yeah, like, you're like, you like, but he's, uh, okay, this is a bit, no, he's not, he's, he's not stupid. He is oblivious to a lot of things around him in such a magical, wonderful way. Right. And he has such a kind, warm, so, and it's very Jake. It's very Jake to sit with a drag queen all night and think it's just a, a lovely woman. Is he like, that? He's just, he just doesn't care. And he's very open to everyone being themselves. And that's just that. And he doesn't. Well, he kissed someone... you in the back of a van. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, that didn't, you, you liked him. Do you know what? I, I did have a little crush. And now we're like best friends. It's really awkward looking back. But um, yeah, who wouldn't want to? No, he was darling. He was darling. And he got better at his job. He did. As he yeah. went along. Um, and Eddie, we, we're going to come back to Eddie. who Because he is just like the ultimate. He and Lee are like the OG. And the fact that Eddie always leads with a bad joke kills me. He's great. He's great. He's brilliant television. He, he is. And I love the fact that when everyone, he talks about being short, that it's like, Person, 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 yep. Eddie, person, person, person. Um, Rihanna. Who? Raina. Raina, yes. Raina, Rihanna, Raina. I was like, uh, we can talk about Rihanna, I love her. Oh, we'll get to her. Uh, um, <laughs> Raina, you yes. were there. What version of that didn't we see? Because that was, okay, for people who don't know, mm -hmm. Heather. Yes. Not unwittingly, but thought she was being jokey and funny. Yes. Repeated Correct. something that... Raina said that involved the N word. Mm -hmm. And it was obviously very upsetting. Yes. And Heather did apologize yes. and apologize yes. and apologize. Yes. And Raina kept saying, I believe you, I believe you, I believe you. She didn't. And justifiably was very upset and very angry. Yes. And, but wouldn't deal with it. You summarized that exquisitely. Oh, well, thank you. Because that's exactly what happened. And I have as much further knowledge as you do. And that's not much on that. Because it was fascinating that she was expecting reactions, like when she went the first time and talked to Eddie, and Eddie really believed that she was talking, he was, she was talking about how to deal with stress at work. When there was this whole subtext that, that he- had nothing to do with That it. had nothing to, that he did not know about. How- I can't imagine being trapped in that situation with somebody doing something unwittingly so awful and insensitive and then having to live and work with them, but then being stuck. And I really did sympathize with her 
that she couldn't let it go. Yes. Yes, I think it was more of a case of not understanding how to cope with how you're feeling. Mm-hmm. Um, and I can't speak for her. It was a very uncomfortable situation for everyone at hand. But she was obviously um, very, very affected by it. And um, I don't think she ever was able to get to the core of solving that pain. Yeah. Or, yeah, healing. The only time I really... There were two times, though, that I really wanted to reach through the TV and that annoyed me was the eye rolling. A lot. Of, there was a lot of that. But she did that even before. Yes. She was a big eye roller. Yes. And that guy, I felt bad for Wes. Yeah. When she well, went after at the end, Wes. I mean, I mean, that was awful. Well, I think and, that's when we all just said, you know what? This guy's just trying to help. Yeah. And now you're going for everyone's right. jugular. And for people who don't know, Wes is multiracial. He is, yeah. And he identifies as black. He actually felt bullied in school because that he didn't fit in anywhere. And then she told him he couldn't possibly understand how she was feeling. And how insensitive is that? And I thought, I felt so badly for him because he was just trying. But I have to say, also thinking about Wes, he has, I've never seen anyone with less game. Right. I mean, again, I mean, it was painful. The sweetest guy on earth, but excruciating to watch in the flirtation game. Yes. I mean, excruciating. You, he, he, he was heart wrenching. I just don't think he's got that fire in him. Well, the best is for people again who don't know that he would be having like an intimate conversation with a girl, and they'd be leaning in. You saw her do everything, but go like this. Yeah. And he'd yeah, go like, yeah, yeah, woo, yeah, gotta go. Yeah. yeah. And like he would literally yeah. be like, I didn't know she wanted to kiss me. No cues there. Just wasn't getting it. No. Just, he was just, he's just the worst game, as you've said, ever. Did you want to sit him down and say, like, Wes? Like, we all did. You did say to him, like, let's like, give you a, a game oh, 101. And Jess was open to it. She, she was did, ready to go. Yeah. She did everything but, like, take her top off. Right. But she, yeah. she kind of. Yeah. Didn't end up so. No, that so was really well. tough. She just felt like she didn't want to learn. She didn't want to be there, Melissa, from the minute she got there. From the minute. So why did she take the job? You tell me. Oh, I, mean, I wasn't there. You tell that's me. That's the thing. I would ask that to her. And I also would say, you know, we tried to get to the, the root of the issue every single time she had a problem or a meltdown. And there was just none. She's just not a stewardess. And if she is, I hope she's doing really well. But not on a ship that I want to work on. Because I was carrying that load oh, yeah. b- above and beyond. In season 10, you, uh, not, we're not season 10 yet. So I want to go back to, to yeah. the delay. Because I've got so much I want to yes. ask. Okay. There are a couple times that you perhaps have been a little overserved. Mm-hmm. And that's not a typical of you. There is one where you're just like, I feel like you're ready to come out with big sun. Well, you do come out with sunglasses. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. I mean, you, I, I, it was hilarious. Now, how often does that actually happen? I mean, we see the crew going out all the time yeah. and getting just fucked up. Yeah. Let's I, not be around the bush. We go crazy. Yes. We are working so hard. We see no end in sight of the season. And if you want to let your hair down, you do because you're, you've got pent up anger, you've got pent up issues. You just want to drink and then you just don't stop. No. And also, yes, we are working, but we're in the Caribbean. It's beautiful. It's hot. It's great. And you, that's a side of the job that you really can enjoy. And really only that side of the job outside of work. Right. Uh, before we're shipped off back to where we've come from. So yeah, you let your hair down. And you know, again, not our finest moment, but we're all human and we've all done it. And if someone tells me they haven't, I don't want to sit with them. No, but you did have some good, perhaps. I went crazy. Yes, you did. But equally, I know that I'm not a crazy drunk, so I'm fine with getting crazy. Not a crier, not a complainer, not a problem child. I'm a bit... Can't really stand very well, but aside from that, <laughs> I get a little I'm tipsy. Just a love bug, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, there's got to be times that we don't see. Oh, there are that go on. I mean, where does where do they draw the line and going? This is too over the top. You will be told. You, you someone will just be like, "No, nah, this is. What is that safe?" Yeah, 
Um, it rarely happens. It doesn't happen often. It doesn't. Right. Um, but it's also, you know, if, they, if, if, if things have gone on too long and there's no fun in it, it we're just like, right, okay, let's just call it a night. I always, because, and I know that there are cameras in the cabin. Yes. And the only place you have privacy is in the bathroom. Yes. And I read somewhere that if there are more than two people in the bathroom, yeah. you have to allow yeah. the crew to come in. How do you sleep? Knowing that the cameras are there. Well, I'm a hideous sleeper. Oh no, that? you're not a pretty. I'm not a pretty sleeper. Well, I don't think I am. People say I'm, I'm not. I I'm can, not. I'm, I just, know I am not a pretty sleeper at all. I am face down. It's just not and cute. drooling, and I'm a traveler. It, right. Me, it's when I close my eyes. I'm actually insecure about even blinking at this rate. I've seen a picture of me sleeping with my eyes. I just don't look okay. <laughs> He's not a pretty sleeper. So I also stupidly picked the top bunk for my first season um and saw enough of that so going forward i just know to just but i think naturally you just turn your head away from the camera so that there's no or blanket do you do they let you put something over the camera at no, night when you're sleeping never you can't touch the cameras ever but don't you want to i see i would do it the thing is you pick your battles. Yes. And those, once you sign that contract. They own you. They own, and, and, and you know what? If you do, then you're off before you can take your next breath. You know, you're off. Right. How, how do you start to negotiate? I'm sure it's part of the first season and the second. Mm -hmm. Getting dressed. Because you're very proud of how you present yourself. Mm -hmm. You can't just be constantly getting ready in that tiny little bathroom. Oh, yes, I am. <laughs> yes, like I am. This. Yeah. Because people, I mean, some of the girls are just ass out. Yeah. I'm in. I'm in and out. You're just like, yeah. no one's going to see this unkempt. I mean, they don't use that clearly. It's not interesting enough. But right. um, no, I, you know, I, I'm, 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 ve I'm very strategic. I'm ve I'm, I've got a problem, clearly. Everything I turn up with is already pressed. It just needs a little bit of a steam. It's ready to go. I'm in that bathroom and I'm out, and I'm ready to rumble. That does not shock me. Um, in season 10, yes. you were promoted to chief steward. I was. There, how much pressure were you under? Because there had to be moments where you're like, fuck this, I was happier being second, take the stripe. 100%. Day one was touch and go. I went to bed that night thinking I was going to leave the next morning. What happened the first it was, day? It was arriving to the vessel, the biggest vessel they've ever used on the franchise. It was 196? Huge. It was yeah. huge. Um, with a whole new crew, with a whole new job, with a new position of a deck stew, with provisions coming in, guests arriving in less than 24 hours, and I didn't know where a fork or a glass was. The provisions was huge. Everything was just so much. I thought that I'd bitten off more than I could chew. And to be quite frank, I really didn't see myself taking on that season. My anxiety was through the roof. But I knew that I would never forgive myself, ever, if I didn't take that challenge and take it on. Was I perfect that season? Absolutely not. But did I learn a mammoth amount? Yeah. Well, so much went on that season. We're going to break it all yeah. down. So before we continue and really get into season 10, mm -hmm. may I offer you? Please. What would okay, you like? I have world's sweetest too. What would you like? I am just going to have one of those little biscuits up there, I think. Which you guys have a total different understanding to biscuits than we do, don't you? No. Well, yes, but. I feel like I asked for a biscuit once and like a muffin cake. No, no. I see. I know a biscuit is a cookie. Same. But I had a father that was born in Germany, raised in South Africa and educated in England. Right, so, so you, have, I understand. you had the truth Here's growing up. Fork. I will let you serve yourself I because will. I don't want to touch your food. Oh, thank you. Um, I'm going to go with this because that's delish. Look. Doesn't that look nice? And then we'll, I will be tucking into a scone. Yes, and we have proper Devonshire cream. Of course you do. Because we knew we were having a proper Englishman. <laughs> a high tea. Ever high tea. Okay, you eat. I'm going to ask you a question. Okay, I'm going to have a little nibble. No problem. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Ten, a big season. Oh. So you're on as Chief Stew. Mm -hmm. 
You have a bit of a motley crew. A bit. Starting with the actual crew, Mm -hmm. with the actual deck team. Here comes, what was it, Ross, who seems to have his act together and within the first five minutes of the show says, by the way, I like group sex. Mm -hmm. You have a very capable young lady. Was it, what was her name? We have Haley. No, no, of the deck crew. Oh, sorry. Um, God, you're wrecking my bones now. We had- She's really pretty. Oh, Katie. Katie, she was great. Mm -hmm. And then the third, oh, then you had Tony. Correct. And Ben. Yes. And there's all sorts of right. But on the interior, you had Haley, mm-hmm. at Ali- Alyssa. Alyssa, and Camille. Camille, who's technically the Dex do. When did you know you were going to be in trouble with Camille? Because I saw it coming down the dock. Did you? Yes. I didn't. So it's funny you said, I really didn't. I thought, fine. I had all the warning signs. Really, why? And it, it couldn't have been more, more, more incorrect if I tried because she is perfection to me. Um, Haley is what she is. She, yeah, she is what she is. And she, that's all I ask of these people. You know, she comes on, you yeah. know, hair and tits and ass and lips. And, and she loved it. Yeah. But she said yes to everything that was asked of her. She never complained apart from every part of her body aching 24-7. But she never complained about any other thing. Um, and she was an enthusiastic worker. And that is just the the baseline of what you need in a stew. And funny. And hilarious. Do you get to see the interviews that people are doing before, uh, in in real time? So I know that Mm -hmm. you guys do the interviews for each episode every, was it three days? uh, Between every charter. Between every charter. Yeah. And I know one of the things I also know is like, which I always feel bad for the girls, is they set your look Mm -hmm. for the first interview and you're stuck with it for the entire season. And you right. think, what if you didn't like it? Yeah. So in the first interview they show with Camille, she's like, well, I always have to be, I was too big for that town. And all this stuff. And you're like, oh dear God, this is going to be an issue. When did you know you were in trouble with Camille? Um, I would have been the hair color. Because it wasn't natural. No. But I don't think any of my students really look that natural walking on board. Again, I don't judge because at the at those early stages, you can't make a decision. Because um, high maintenance, that's high, high maintenance hair color. Yes, it is. And you think, how are well, you going to- so is Haley's. But Haley's at least is dark. When you walk on with platinum white hair- Root. That's it's, you're going to get roots within a minute. Yeah, you yeah. you got to be doing your roots every, every, every week. It's difficult because looking back, I, I, I watched, so I don't see, just to clarify, we don't see any, any of the content, nothing, until it airs with you guys. Oh, we actually see it a day before you guys, but that's it. Oh, well, that's reassuring. Nothing. <laughs> nothing. And we have no say. No. So when I when we watch it back, also people don't understand. People have this very warped understanding about it and how it works. In that, when things are being, when something's happening on the boat, and I'm not physically there, well, Kel surprise, I won't have seen that at all or have any knowledge of it happening. So when people are acting crazy and they're like, Fraser, why aren't you getting involved? I'm like, well, because I'm not there. And people are like, well, but it's a show. I'm like, exactly. You have to understand that it's based on reality. And I can't see everything. So when I look, watched back and I saw Camille's attitude, I thought, good grief. Have I sat back and not been aware? But she was a smart cookie. Very. Because in front of me, her halo was, was bright. Very much so. You had, within the first moment of the show, Captain Lee, mm-hmm. boat daddy, had to go. Yeah. For medical issues. Yeah. You see Rachel fall apart mm-hmm. because they are really father daughter yeah. relationship, and she's a fabulous chef, but a crazy person. Yes, were you worried she wasn't going to be able to keep it together? No, I wasn't. No, I, she's professional, a fantastic chef, and professional enough to do her job without letting this affect her. I never worried about that. But the boat was very concerned about the future of our season and about Lee's health, and him leaving just shook us all up. I was broken um, because he'd so desperately wanted to be there. He's so passionate and brilliant at his job and guiding us all. 
and to see him by no fault of his own or by, you know, the, the total opposite of want to, of what he wanted to happen was happening. And that was heartbreaking for all of us. Well, and age sucks. It does. Age sucks. He was also very much, he had a soft spot for you. Yeah. And you had one for him. Yeah, he's, a, he, he, I look up to him enormously and he trusts me. And that's very rare. That trust allows me to be creative and have freedom in my work and to be to be the best version of myself. Now, when you have a captain that doesn't trust you. Well, as they, and they brought on Captain Sandy. And you guys had an interesting relationship, completely different management styles. Why do you think, because you're so organized and motivated and a worker. And she likes people who know their job, do their job. Why did you guys not connect? I would have thought on on surface, I would have thought you guys would have been hand in hand. Yeah, I think in a, under different circumstances, we, we should have been. Yeah. And we could have been um, because we are compatible in that way of work. However, I think that maybe, and I've only just thinking about this now, I haven't thought about this answer previously, but maybe with the circumstances we were dealing with, with my crew and other people's opinions of Captain Sandy infiltrated in a bad way and got involved and lured me into, you know, her having an issue with me. The other Sues didn't particularly like Captain and, um, and I guess because I didn't shut that down quick enough or I didn't hush it, I was in line to be, um, you know, to be the one responsible for, for hiccups. Because I really did think you were going to just unravel and melt down. Yeah. So Close. talk people through, who may not have seen it, the stew drama of season 10. Because it was intense yeah. and you would not see stuff the one you thought was stable turned out to be one of the crazy people. I mean, yes. there was, I, I could not have, the casting was brilliant because there were so many, brilliant. so many personality conflicts. It was brilliant, but it was a nightmare to live. Well, okay. So explain, what was the, explain to people where the, the different personalities. So we've got, uh, we've got Alyssa, who is a fabulous worker. She's quick. She's thorough. She's a stew at S. Done. We've got Camille, who just wants to chill. She doesn't want to work and she has far more fun drinking and playing and chatting to the boys than she does doing anything else. And uh, on one of the first beach picnics goes- Goes for a swim. Go, goes for a swim. Right. She, doesn't want to, she wants to be there, but not to work, right? Who doesn't? Right. And then you've got Hayley, who is enthusiastic, hysterical, dry, British. She nails it all, but- really not that great of a stew. But she says yes, and she tries, and that's all you can ask for. Right. That's the setup. The first idea of the setup. And after that, you've got two competing girls. You've got Camille and Alyssa, and they're competing for attention. They're competing for... It's a power struggle. It is. And, and I made Alyssa my second, because she was a brilliant stewardess. And, and, had, and had uh, experience. experience. I would never take that decision back, ever. There was no, it was, it was just no other way anything else could have worked. However, Alyssa imposing her dominance on Camille rubbed her up the wrong way. And they both were just at it. And then Alyssa did not have a wonderful end of the season. No, no. And that was strange. When the, when the dynamic was no longer there between Camille and Alyssa, Alyssa changed. You know, I then saw her really just slacking. She no longer needed to impress everyone by her hard work because Camille wasn't there, I'm interpreting. And um, I caught her on the phone, FaceTiming, sitting up with her legs up while guests are on board. Not a great worker. No. This The deck crew had its own share of drama, yeah. of which, first of all, when Camille left and... Ben unravels and cries. Like, dude, you knew her for like 48 hours. 10 minutes, yeah. Yeah. Could you even begin? Did you ever just want to shake him and go, what the fuck is wrong with you? I couldn't be bothered. I was so furious that he was, he stopped basically, he stopped talking and looking at everyone. He wouldn't have any communication with anyone. And I thought, do you know what? Grow up. 
what does she have a, a, a special vagina trick? Well, it's clearly something because I don't know what that could be. He also saw her being so terrible towards the vessel, the job and the crew. I'm just like, why? How can you protect that? Anyway, he stopped talking to us all. And I just thought, I'm not even going to bother. He can get over it. No, like, grow up. Deal with that in your own time. But I'm going to work. Right. And Tony, just always busy working out. That's right. Now, I can't remember which franchise it is, but isn't there one former deck member that is, has like a big OnlyFans thing with his boyfriend? Yes. Now, was that Tony? No. Okay. Um... He's from like one of the first seasons, right? Oh, but I just, I, for some reason, I kept thinking it was Tony. No, it's not. Although every cast, previous cast member seems to be jumping on OnlyFans now. Yeah. Well, there you go. There's your next. Absolutely your next move. Not. I have bigger dreams. <gasps> exactly. So what? What? And then what was the hardest part of that second season for you? Because it also felt like there was a big sigh of relief when Lee came back. Yes. The, the hardest part was coming to terms with the, the job. Um, and within that, allowing myself to trust others to do stuff because I was doing everything because I felt like I had to oversee something. And that's just a management journey. Mm -hmm. And after that, I have to say it was my conflict with Sandy um, and the way it made me feel and the things. It was, it was a very tough time because I had no one to fall on. You can't fall on your stews mm -mm. who are supposed to be looking up to. You can't fall on anyone. No. And so, and trying to understand why there was such, I don't want to say aggression, why there was such. Um, there was a very much an undercurrent of aggression. Yeah. Okay. If you want to say yeah. it. Yeah. But yeah, I think there was, it, I felt very attacked and I, I definitely wasn't, um, attacking back or even having any any reason to go that way so I just felt like I was being pushed into a corner but um, it is what it is and we resolved things somehow and I'm glad we did and um, and yeah I, learned I mean Sandy's a really good leader yeah yeah she and she has a ton of life experience mm -hmm. to bring which is why I was so surprised that you guys didn't yeah I also think it's mid-season I'm already on the verge, you know, of, of, of jumping, jumping overboard. I mean, I adore you and I adore your character, but you, you can be wound a little tight. Yeah, of course. And you know what, if I wasn't, then I can't say that. Um, you wouldn't be as good at your job. I think so. I care beyond I should. Mm -hmm. And that's what sets me aside. And that's possibly why I'm the first male chief Stu. And yet in the first season, you were all insecure yeah, when okay. someone else was coming yeah, on. Yeah, of course. And I thought also, the insecurities are good because they push you and they make you stronger and they make you more resilient. Um, but yes, I, yeah, I learned a lot. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm very, I'm proud of it. And Sandy did teach me a lot. And I saw a dis different perspective of things there. And I'm really just happy that she eventually saw me for who I am and, and who I want to be perceived as in my position. I mean, you you jumped up a huge, I mean, you we saw you grow into the job. Yes. Which was amazing. My favorite are the guests. First of all, where do they find these people? <laughs> Honestly, I have no idea. I mean, I, who would want to take a vacation? I know. And be filmed. I know. And Sandy actually once asked me, would you do the show? I said, I would be the most boring guest. Because when I go on vacation, I sleep. Sure. Read. You turn off. I turn off. Yeah. I mean, I couldn't even imagine. Here's an entire episode of somebody sleeping. I know. And you know, there's nothing, there's nothing, well, I, I guess it depends on the guests, but usually the guests, bless their sweethearts, think it's about them. Well, it kind of, I mean, the show I was isn't. About to say, the charter is. The charter is. But the show's not. So with that comes, oh, I'm going to be a dramatic asshole. And it's going to be great. Well, no, there's only one winner here. And it's us who get to talk about you later. Because we're, you know. What is the worst guest request you've ever gotten? Recently, um, I was asked for uh, not an ice bath, but for the hot tub to be filled with ice after a workout. In the Caribbean. That's not... 
outrageous. Think, that's just stupid. stupid. But that, that's, it was so stupid because he didn't come back from it. He didn't withdraw the request. He was very much asking me to do it. And after saying to him on mo- multiple occasions that that just wasn't scientifically possible, I still wouldn't let go. So I filled his bath up. And oh, I was going to just fill your bath up. But getting him to that was... What's okay? That's outrageous. But what's got, the, what's the craziest? That's just ridiculous. Yes, yeah, I, I mean that's almost asking someone to do something just to see if they'll do it. Yes, true. A crazy request. Um, we sent a helicopter from Saint Tropez to Monaco to pick up a pair of shoes for dinner that evening. Within two hours. God, people have money to mm-hmm. burn. Those must have, were they nice shoes? She didn't wear them in the end. <laughs> Think about that stress. Of course. Oh, God. Yeah. He must have been twitching. <laughs> so when I go on to Blue Deck, I'm like, okay, this is doable then, isn't it? That is insane. You tend, everybody tends, the whole crew tends, to judge people coming down the dock. Yes. Where have you been the most right? Where have you been the most wrong? always wrong really because it doesn't seem that way because it comes to a point where then you all made a mistake the first time you've judged someone by their first you know impression so you change your opinion on the next guest you're like well i thought that about this person because they did this and then it's always wrong so i just don't do it however in season 10 our final guests the muscly ones Mm -hmm. with with zero expression came on board and i thought for our last charter this season this is really what we need Turns out they were divine. They were lovely. The sense of calm and tranquility they brought to us at the end of the season, it was like the gift of God. It was beautiful. They they were lovely. Yeah. I also like the fact that you guys all judge them just by the preference sheet. Oh, yes, that's a good one. Yeah. That can be quite true, though. Yes. So you've got the doc sightings and you've got the preference sheets. Yeah. Because if a preference sheet is two pages long for 24 hours, 36 hours, if they're lucky, 72 on a boat... You know, again, eat around it, as I always say. Yes. You know, and I I joke because I laugh because I have the palate of a child. Really? Oh my god, I am terrible. I'm terrible. I like that makes you easy. Except when everybody else wants to eat other things. Right. Okay. I'm Uh, like, but again, on a soup, you're easy because if you get just do a simple dish on the side, that takes two sets. Right. But I always think about, and I said this to Captain Sandy. I feel like I need to go back and apologize because I had no idea how asking for butter noodles for my child would throw the entire galley into chaos. I can see why, yeah. Yeah, it's like, he's this big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but I I, I do feel badly saying, no, no, I'll just have a plan. I'm always like, if you don't know what to do and it's too fancy, just give me a piece of grilled plain chicken breast. That Because that takes two sets. Right. Which is brilliant. But you think, in front of house, you're like, that's not a big request. And then you look, and you see the organization, the time of what needs to be done for the others and how we're going to fit a chicken breast in that. Yeah. Sounds ridiculous, but it, it, it disturbs it. However, with Heinz in, in, with that being prepared, we're good. Right. People that come on and just go, oh yeah, I love that. Or I'm happy with this. Or I just eat chicken. We love them. We absolutely. As long as you don't spring it on them. True. That's Which exactly is, the, what's right. the hardest meal? I would think breakfast because it's so many different orders. Yes. Well, yes. I always try and push people for favorites. And I go over completely over the top about how wonderful the ones I want them to have are. And then it's quite easy. Breakfast, yeah. Um, dinner's always a menu. And lunch we've discussed previously. So it's all kind of fine. Um, although recently we did a beach picnic um, where we did sushi. And we put the sushi on. Well, someone put the sushi in a large box on a bed of ice um, with a platter underneath it. And obviously ice melts. And that was totally submerged in the water. So all the sushi was gone. That's not good. It's gross. Wet sushi is disgusting. But also, think ahead, guys. Ice melts. Yes. But also, again, you know, you don't order seafood in Wyoming in a heat wave in the middle of summer. Right. right, There are certain basic safety, (laughs) food safety things. Agreed, agreed, agreed. How surprised are you when you watch the show back? What's your your cringiest moment that you've seen of yourself? Season nine, 
someone did my someone attempted to do my makeup for the <laughs> pickups, right? <laughs> and I looked like an Oompa Loompa. Okay, I don't remember that, but okay. I don't I'll know go back you and don't. look. No, please don't. I'm, of course, I'm going to go back and look. You don't. I'm very happy about. Um, I looked horrendous, and I'm still not living that down. That was the worst. Again, you watch it back, and you're like, "Why would I say that? Or how do I say that?" And then you realize that you're, you know, that's just who you are, and it's brilliant. But every season is interesting to watch back. I love it. So, can we ask about your personal life? Yeah, sure. So, bring us up to date because we talk a lot. You, you know, you do have moments where you're like, "I wish I could meet somebody." Mm. Yes, well, I've been single now for about five years and um, I've got to become very, very happy in myself. Um, and if someone comes along and who brings me nothing but more joy and happiness, then I'm very happy. And if someone comes along and brings me anything less than that, then I haven't got time for it. How much money does he have to have for you to tolerate perhaps a few little things that you don't care for? Again, money cures all. So yeah. he could bring it on. <laughs> Great. I am so happy to have had the chance to talk to you. Thank you so much for having me. Keep watching group text. <laughs>